Thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation about coronavirus. I am convinced that this is a very fluid situation and what I tell you today will rapidly change in the next few days. In this slide, you can see that what initially started in a seafood market in China has exploded and rapidly expanded to become a true pandemic. Um, I don't think that there's any of us that is not um, bombarded by significant information regarding coronaviruses. Interestingly, although coronavirus is a concern and it's a pandemic, uh, we should never forget that other illnesses like influenza clearly create significant amount of concerns. And what we will discuss today, the use of point of care ultrasonography to assess the lung is very equally valid in other conditions like influenza. You can see that from October of 2019 to February 22nd of 2020, the CDC estimates that there have been between 32 and 45 million flu illnesses um, in, 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 in our country, um, uh, 14 million to 21 million medical visits and between 310 and 560,000 flu hospitalizations with deaths that vary between 18,000 and 46,000. So a significant amount of concern and although the numbers um, are much higher than what would we seen with coronavirus, this has not received the necessary attention that it deserves. Everybody is wanting to have a vaccine against coronavirus, but sadly said we have a vaccine for influenza and not everybody has taken the advantage to take this. This is a complex uh, algorithm, and this is the pathway that we design for our hospital and ED setting in our institution. And the rationale for me to present this is not to discuss the pathway, but to describe that in, in an infectious process uh, regarding an endemic or pandemic uh, case, um, there's a multitude of steps. And the multitude of steps makes it complex and to prevent running out of resources and infecting care providers, um, we need to deviate from the normal processes and think outside of the box and use other tools. And this is where point of care ultrasonography is quite helpful. And I think in a few more slides, you will see the rationale for this. But if we summarize the previous slide, we can summarize it in three different points. The first is, first and foremost, you must wear uh, personal protective equipment and an exposure to the virus mandates a quarantine of the personnel um, for, 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 for 14 days. So um, uh, if you wear the PPE correctly, you are not exposed. Uh, if you do have an exposure and the patient's confirmed to have coronavirus, you will be quarantined for 14 days. We need all the um, personnel that we can use for this, and we don't need individuals to get ill. We don't need individuals to suffer the consequences that, in general, will be mild for the healthy individual. But in the elderly, this or in the individual that is immunocompromised, this could be a concern. Um, um, the second por portion is um, we will be dealing with severe pneumonia, which is very vaguely defined. And you can see the things listed there, respiratory rate greater than 30, saturations less than 93, or um, um, PF ratios less than 300 with greater than 50% infiltrates on chest X-ray. 
um, in clearly not an identified etiology, like a negative influenza test or a viral panel, which I will show you in a minute, and equivocal exposure. Um, and if you do that, then you need to get infection control involved in the public health department. And for patients um, who are suspected, um, at least the initial recommendations were to place them in a negative pressure isolation room. We don't have enough of those and our pathways have slightly been modified, but you can see that there's a multitude of things involved. Um, the um, data regarding coronavirus and uh, ultrasound stems from um, older studies that appeared in the past. Um, and one that is remarkable is um, use of ultrasonography in the diagnosis of pneumonia. This is for pneumonia, not, we're not talking about coronavirus, but pneumonia in general. And in this case of 55 patients, the ultrasonography demonstrated to be 100% sensitive and 91% specific with an accuracy of 98.2% in diagnosis of pneumonia compared to CAT scan. So this is the value of ultrasonography uh, compared to uh, CAT scan and is talking about pneumonia in general. But we can take some of this data and apply it to um, viral entities and in particular coronaviruses. Although we don't have specific studies that address this particular issue. In this study, uh, lung ultrasound for the diagnosis of pneumonia in adults uh, what is remarkable is the number of patients. So this is a meta-analysis of 12 studies containing uh, over 1,500 subjects. And again, uh, the sensitivity and specificity of ultrasonography was quite high and quite adequate. So the conclusion of this study is that lung lung ultrasound can be helpful to diagnose adult pneumonia with high accuracy. One of the very few papers that is available um, is illustrated in this um, slide and is the CT findings of novel coronavirus. It's actually this in organism um, in the changes that it produced. And you can see that there's inflammatory changes in the lung um, and you can see that they are mainly in the periphery of the lung, um, as shown here by these arrows. Um, and that is what makes it quite adequate to examine with ultrasonography. So the pleura would be against the chest wall, and these infiltrates are quite close and peripheral, which is accessible for us to examine with ultrasound. Uh, in this um, slide, you can see um, the normal findings when you examine the lung with ultrasonography. And you can see that the, in the first portion, you can see from the skin to the soft tissue and then to the pleura. And the pleura will produce artifacts, which are called rever reverberation artifacts. And the artifact that it will produce in a normal case, a lung that is aerated, a normal is a repetitive distance from the skin to the pleura, and those will be the A lines as illustrated here. Um, for us that have been in medicine for many years, we remember the um, older textbooks of internal medicine that described that the value of ultrasonography in the assessment of the lung was quite um, useless because the lung contained, contained air, and uh, that is uh, the enemy of ultrasound the bone and air will be interfering with the transmission of sound waves. Uh, but we can use that to assess if the lung is well aerated. In contrast to that, when the lung is wet and the lung is in flame, you are gonna see the pleural line. And from there, there will be these rockets, which is like the emission from a rocket that will produce a significant uh, abnormality, which called, is called B-lines, um, after a French clinician who described that at great length. So a lung that is aerated produces A-lines, a lung that is inflamed and congested will produce lung rockets. 
In addition to that, we can see like we compared in the past uh, images, the CAT scan, you can see that um, the lung can be consolidated and will be very similar to the liver. And not only that, but you will see bronchograms that um, will be depicted because bronchi contain air and you can have dynamic and um, static bronchograms. The most specific sign for actual pneumonia is what is called the shred sign. It's like if you would shred the lung because there will be this division between the um, aerated lung and the non-aerated lung that looks more like liver. And here is shown what the diaphragm and you will have this shredded sign that will be very typical of uh, pneumonia. So it's not any different than pneumonia that you develop from a bacterial infection than from a viral infection and ultrasonography will be very useful for that. So the system is slowly changing uh, or rapidly changing. And we have uh, clearly an ICD code for this entity. And I believe that we need to adapt all our resources for a rapidly changing process. And in this slide, I have um, two tools that we commonly use currently which is the radiograph, a portable chest X-ray in the intensive care unit, or taking the patient into a CAT scanner. And um, although this is commonly used, um, most of us who have uh, used um, radiograph in the intensive care unit will not be surprised when the radiologist describes this as uh, chest X-ray reveals by basal or infiltrates, atelectasis, early pneumonia, or pleural effusion should be considered. Clinical correlation is indicated. And that is telling you that in a majority of the cases, you will have an abnormality, and the radiologist cannot differentiate atelectasis from pleural effusions or a pneumonia. And ultrasound can. And so this is a very valid technique to use. You can imagine that bringing this piece of equipment to take a chest X-ray and an individual will expose, this is, this is hard to clean. Uh, this individual needs to be in the room. Um, taking the patient into a CAT scanner and exposing them to all this equipment uh, logistically makes um, a lot of differences in contrast to uh, a point of care ultrasound. And in this picture, we, we have um, a point of care ultrasound device that can be connected to a smartphone or to an iPad. And you can understand that you can clean this and maintain even in the patient's room if necessary. Um, and if you would destroy this by using uh, disinfectants that are not kind to your equipment, uh, they, the, the loss is much different from a handheld phone versus a large piece of equipment like a portable chest X-ray machine or a CAT scanner. So this is quite useful. And uh, I believe that time will show that this will be the preferable weapon to use in situations like what we're facing nowadays. And just to finish, um, the disinfectants that are recommended for managing coronaviruses. The preferable are listed in the top, alcohol 62 to 71%, uh, but one minute exposure time will reduce the viral load between three and four log to the 10th power, sodium hypochlorite 0.1 to 0.5% or glutaraldehyde 2% will have a significant uh, value in disinfecting equipment and the other ones listed are useful, but not as highly recommended as what we have on top. So I do believe that we are in a rapid changing situation. Uh, hopefully we will be able to flatten the curve and elim eliminate large number of individuals exposed to this virus, but we are due to see many patients affected by this. And I believe that, um, equally to other conditions like bacterial pneumonias and other viral pneumonias like influenza, I think that 
it is time to look at tools like point of care ultrasonography to assess the lung. And hopefully this will stimulate your interest to learn more about lung ultrasonography and that you come back and visit us at our website and we can discuss in great detail um, the actual techniques and the images and give you opportunities for you to practice and see what a normal lung looks under ultrasonography and what an abnormal lung is all about. So with this, I will end and hope that we see you back at our site in the future. Thank you.